Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 23 of our Golang course. In this lesson, following the trend of our previous lessons, we are going to cover another composite data types, a map. So let's begin. In Go, a map is built-in data structure that allows you to store and retrieve values based on keys. Each value in a map is associated with a unique key, which can be of any comparable type like integers, strings, etc. Maps provide an efficient way to look up values based on their keys because the data is stored as key value pairs. It's very similar to how you might use a dictionary in real life, where you can look up the meaning of a word or the value by its corresponding entry or the key. In Go, the map data structure is implemented as a hash table or also known as hash maps. Hash maps use a technique called hashing to efficiently store and retrieve values based on their keys. Hashing involves converting a key into a numerical value or the hash code using a hash function. This hash code is then used to index into an array or similar data structure where the actual value is stored. This means maps have a fast operation times for inserting, retrieving, and deleting values, making them suitable for scenarios where you need to have quick access to data based on their keys. However, it's important to note that maps do not guarantee the order of iteration over keys and values, like an array or a slice. We will look at how to iterate over keys and value pairs of a map once we cover the for loop in a future lesson. Like other data types, the len function can be used to get the number of values or key value pairs stored in a map. Let's now look at some examples of how maps look in Go. As you can see, the map keyword is used to create a map in Go. This map is named NameAge and it has key of type string while the values of type int. So inside the map or inside the curly braces, you can see I have a key foo, then I associated a value of 25 with it. The next key is bar and I associated a value of 20 with it. So that's how you create a map in Go. Here is another example of a map called first name and last name, where the key is of type string and the value is also of type string. Inside the curly braces, we have key value pairs. This is the key and this is the value. So foo key is associated with the bar value and bar key is associated with the foo value. And that's how you create a map in Go. If a map is declared but not explicitly initialized, its zero value is nil indicating that the map is empty and doesn't contain any key value pairs. A nil map can be created using a variable declaration without explicitly initializing it. Here is an example of a nil map. Here, name age is a map of type with keys string and values int, and it's a nil map since we don't explicitly initialize its value. The built-in len function will return zero for a nil map since it doesn't contain any elements. When you attempt to read a value from a nil map, you will get the zero value for the value type associated with the map. So if I try to read from this map, I will get a zero value associated with the value type, which is zero for nth case. Attempting to add or modify a key value pair in a nil map will result in a runtime panic. Maps must be initialized before you can write data to them. Now let's look at empty maps and the difference between an empty map and a nil map. You can create empty maps using various methods such as using literal syntax or the make function. We will look at some examples in the next slide. Similar to the nil map, the len function will return zero for the empty map since it doesn't contain any key value pairs. You can both read and write to an empty map. Unlike a nil map, an empty map is initialized and can be used for operations. Reading from it will provide the zero value for the value type and writing to it will add the new key value pair into the map. Let's look at some examples. In the first approach, we are creating an empty map named name age utilizing a literal syntax. The curly braces are used to initialize an empty map directly. Here, we are creating an empty map using the make function. The make function is a way to create and initialize various types of data structures, including map. As we have seen in the previous lessons, you can also initialize a slice with it. In case of a map, you can pass the value of the length if you wanted to, but it's not really important and it's not really used in Go code. This is another way to create an empty map. 
we are explicitly declaring a map variable named nameage with type map key of type string and value of type int and initializing it using a literal syntax. Please note all three of these methods will result in creation of an empty map named nameage that can be used to store key value pairs where the keys are strings and the values are integers. Remember, these approaches are functionally equivalent, so you can choose the one you find the most clear and readable for your specific use case. Values in a map can be retrieved using their corresponding keys. If the key in a map exists, the associated value will be returned. Otherwise, as I have mentioned multiple times before, the zero value for the value type will be returned. And this is how you read from a map. Here, name age is a map with string keys. So inside the square braces, we put in the value of the key that we want to retrieve the value for. And this will give you the value of foobar if it exists or the zero value for the type. As mentioned earlier, if the key does not exist, it returns a zero value. The comma OK idiom is a common technique used in Go to check if map contains a specific value. So when you read from a map using a key, it returns two values. If you want, you can ignore the second value, but there's a second value to indicate whether the key exists in a map or not. In this example, if key foo does exist, OK will be true and if it doesn't, OK will be false and so you can handle it accordingly. This is useful when you are also storing zero values in the values path. So for example, imagine if we have a map which associates a student's first name to the marks or the grades they obtained in their exams. Some of the student may have missed the exam and their grade could be zero. But if I try to read from that map and it returns as zero, it could be confusing because it could be done in two cases. One is when the actual value exists but is indeed zero and another case when the key doesn't exist and it will return the zero value for the value. So in those cases, I can use OK idiom to make sure the value does exist and if it doesn't, we can react accordingly. You can assign or update values in a map using their corresponding keys. A new key value pair will be created. Here is an example where we are adding foobar key with a value 50 to the map name age. Maps in Go have unique keys. Each key can only appear once in a map. If you try to add a new key value pair with an existing key, the new value will override the existing one. If I added foobar key with the value 50 and then again I try to do foobar 60, it will override the existing value and when you read from the map name age with the key foobar, you will get 60 as the output. So this is something to keep in mind when working with maps. Map keys in Go must be of comparable type. Comparable type are those that support equality and comparison operations like integer and strings. Slice is not a comparable type, so you cannot use it as a key for a map. This is a requirement to ensure that map can be efficiently manage keys and perform lookups. Unlike keys, map values can be of any type. You can surely use a map value of type slice if you want to, or you can store integer strings, custom structures, or even maps as the value in the map itself. Maps like slices can only be compared to nil. You can check if a map is initialized or not nil or uninitialized if it's a nil. Because map keys are unique, map can also be used as a simple implementation of sets. You can use a map to keep track of unique elements and effectively check for memberships using the key. As we go along the course, we will see more examples related to this. That's it for the lesson. In this lesson, we covered the map data structure and the properties of it. In the next lesson, we will practice maps with code. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment under the video or reach out to the Discord server. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Happy coding!